Welcome everyone. I'm Ashley Froner, Director of Social Media at PETA. We are so excited you're joining us for this encore presentation from PETA President and cat auntie Ingrid Newkirk. Today you'll learn from Ingrid how your cat is finding clever ways to send you messages, how you can transform your home into a cat's castle, and other essential tips from her book, aka The Cat Guardian's Bible, 250 Vital Things Your Cat Wants You to Know. We hope you'll buy several copies, which can be great gifts for friends, family, or even a wonderful donation to your local library. Now, it's my pleasure and honor to introduce Ingrid Newkirk. Hello, everyone. That's Brandy behind me. We'll hear more about her later. Thanks for coming to this talk about gang violence. Oh, wrong talk. This one's about 250 vital things your cat wants you to know or the Cat Guardian's Bible. I can't resist showing you a few silly cat videos, but there'll be lots of solid tips too to make your cat and you happy. Kim Basinger, who wrote the foreword and who loves cats, dogs too, has helped Peter for decades. She helped us save beagles from having their legs broken in a hideous New Jersey laboratory. Kim also saved Pretty Girl, a feral cat found wrapped up inside a plastic bag like this. The vet called Kim to say she probably won't make it, but if she does, will you take her? And Pretty Girl decided she'd certainly be up for pulling through and going to live in Hollywood. For the rest of her life, Pretty Girl slept bang on top of Kim's computer, like this. Well, now someone has invented a feature to detect the nonsense typing that happens when a cat is on your keyboard, and they will delete it. But as Kim says, no matter what they do, cats always make our lives better. Amen. Oops, I forgot. Cats are usually not terribly religious. That said, perhaps you know the joke about the big dog, the little dog, and the cat who die and they go to heaven. God asks them what they believed in, and the little dog says, loyalty. Good, says God, come and sit on my right side. God then asks the big dog, what do you believe in? And the big dog says, I believe in protecting my family. Ah, oh, says God, come and sit on my left side. Then God turns to the cat and says, what do you believe in? And the cat says, I believe you're sitting in my seat. The ancient Egyptians thought cats were gods, and cats still expect that kind of reverence. Here's how you can distract a cat god. Easy. Leonardo da Vinci said, the smallest feline is a masterpiece, and cats really are a rather superior species. I mean, look at them. They're far better behaved, more attentive than human beings. And with movie stars like Ashton Kutcher saying they rarely shower, they are much cleaner than some humans. Also, unless you're Martha Stewart, the condition of your home may scandalize the cat. As if expecting visitors, cats are always presentable. They wash and they groom themselves, sometimes even in the sink. And you never have to remind them to come and eat. They're always ready before we are. The office cats adore steamed broccoli when it's really mushy. They keep their nails filed if you've provided scratching posts, your couch if not, so that's your fault. And it's a rare cat who, unlike a husband or a dog, snores. <laughs> A cat is always up early in the morning, invariably before we are, which can be inconvenient to both parties. And they are resourceful. My colleague Lisa's cat wakes her up by sticking his claw up her nostril. Cats are fastidious about their litter boxes, unless they're ill, and so you must be on your toes about their toilet. If something's wrong, for example, if they're going in and out of the box a lot, or they're missing the box completely, it could be cystitis, which is hideously painful and can be fatal in cats. They drive themselves like tunsis if they could to the vet, but it's up to you to get them there in a hurry. 
In the book, I recount how a cat guardian didn't realize that such things are emergencies, and she put it off a bit for some other business reason. She lost her cat to septicemia, and she will never forgive herself. Miraculously, despite all evidence of our shortcomings, cats seem to find us endearing. If they're critical of us, there's a reason for it. Check that litter box or throw that new boyfriend out of the house. Frankly, it's magnanimous of cats to have anything at all to do with us. This is Trim, an unpaid rat catcher aboard the HMS Porpoise, shipwrecked in 1803. And people once thought of cats as witches' familiars and threw them into the fire to burn. In Europe, cats were tossed from bell towers, and there's even a festival about that in Belgium today. We have so much past misbehavior to atone for, perhaps we can try to make amends by helping stop at least two things. First, homelessness. Too many cats, too few homes. Obviously, you'll sterilize your own cats, but please consider helping by contributing to a spay clinic. We have a little fleet of spaymobiles in North Carolina and Virginia, but it's a worldwide effort. Peter's Global Compassion Fund is sterilizing cats in the Philippines, Mexico, and the biggest slum in Asia. Look at this video. And here are some of the cats who live in Peter, India's Mumbai office, relaxing in a flower pot. Of course, we would never buy a cat, not while shelters are overflowing. But our challenge is to persuade other people to always adopt Never Shop. Second, let's get cats and all animals out of laboratories. I'm going to show you just one ugly picture. You'll remember double trouble and how Peter stopped the experiments on cats like him at the University of Washington. Please go to peter.org often to find out how to help stop many more such experiments. Now a few things people ask me about all the time. Isn't it cruel not to let cats out of the house? What can I do to ensure that my home is a great cat house? No, not that kind. What do I do if I or someone I know has lost their cat? And my cat would never accept another cat in the house. Ha! Huh. They are often as irrational on that score as two bald men fighting over a comb. But it usually works out. Look!
extremely sweet. You know, Jennifer Aniston says that when she's stressed, she allows herself one potato chip. Well, most of us can't have just one, and cats are like potato chips, so you may end up with a clouder of cats. That's what a group of cats is called. But please, don't get too many, as cats get respiratory diseases if there is crowding, and that makes them miserable. If you can't add a cat, a dog may do. My Moomin simply adored my dog, Miss B. She'd throw herself at Miss B's feet. But then again, if that doesn't work out, perhaps another animal will do the trick. Of course, before cats belonged to humans, cats belonged to themselves. They answered to no one unless they felt like it, and they did whatever they wanted to do without our approval. Oh wait, that hasn't changed. Love the video. Yes, before 16 wheelers and humans, cats had no natural enemies to speak of except parasites. And even then, they knew which plants to eat to get rid of those nasty rascals. Yes, we were about as necessary to cats as a bowling ball back in those halcyon days before, as Joni Mitchell sang, we paved their paradise and put up a highway. Nowadays, it's too dangerous to let a cat out without a chaperone and a harness, which I'll get into in a minute. Not the harness, the subject. Now time to take a critical look at Kitty's modern world. Your cat is stuck inside a wooden cement box with compartments, otherwise known as your home. Yes, I know, you live there too. But unlike Father Christmas, who only leaves the house once a year, chances are that you are in and out so often that your cat couldn't pick you up in a police lineup, unless you were dressed like Will Ferrell. You see things, do things, interact with others out there while your cat is stuck at home. At least he or she should be stuck at home because out there is that traffic and other dangers like raccoons and even cat thieves. No, not that kind, this kind. And there are dogs who will chase them up trees. Squirrels can rotate their ankles, but cats can't, which means they can't come back down from that tree. Let me offer one example of a cat who went out without a chaperone. Spoiler alert, it has a happy ending. You okay, huh? Yeah, you're okay. You're okay. You're a butterfly. You gonna be okay? Huh? I don't know. Alright, the butterfly's in the bag. At PETA, we often have to help cats stuck in trees, as agencies sometimes don't respond. But the police did respond to a call that there was a cat in a tree carrying an assault rifle. Look at those markings. Every treed cat needs those. Oh, and while cats do have a writing reflex that allows them to land on their feet, that doesn't mean they'll survive a fall from a considerable height. The rule is that if they fall from three stories up, they'll land on their feet, but they'll often break their jaws and split the roofs of their mouths. Higher than that, they're likely to cash in all nine lives in one go, unless someone catches them. So be careful that the home balcony doors are always kept closed. 
Rescue goes both ways. Cats have woken people up to save them from fires or gas leaks. Jessie, a totally blind cat, won a hero award for attacking a burglar who fled. And this is Tara, who saved a little boy from a pit bull attack. She probably knocked that award off the table as soon as the photographer's back was turned. Cat's sense of smell is very sensitive, and they've even saved human lives by sniffing out the presence of cancers their humans didn't even know they had. Cats need to be indoors. Sir Isaac Newton got so tired of getting up to let his cat spithead, yes, spithead, in and out, that in addition to the telescope, he invented the cat flap. That's something we don't need, because if cats use it, in case I haven't mentioned it before, they should never be outside without you. And while some cats love birds, just one outdoor cat is estimated to kill a whopping 110 birds and other small animals like these dear little people in a year. One year, one cat. We have now established that your cat is a shut-in. Your home is his entire world. And unless you live somewhere like the Hearst Castle, his drab living quarters must be enriched. First, there must be views, comfy places for this honorary Audubon Society member to look out at birds and make faces at passing dogs. If your ordinary window sills might only accommodate a svelte feline bottom, please add a plank to them and cover it with some rug or other material. If your cat's a bit of a blimp, or to put it less offensively in case your cat's listening, built like one of Renoir's women, they may need a ramp up or just drag a box or a piece of furniture close to the window. Window perches are appreciated. Cats, like orangutans, want to be high up all the time. Here's a wonderful, huge catwalk, but you can please cats with far less. Elevated stairs, platforms, boxes up high with peekaboo cutouts. Cat trees near the window and for extra credit, put a bird feeder outside. A bird feeder. I don't think they got the message. Since cats love to soak up the warmth of sun puddles, please make sure they can. If you have a yard, you can build a catio like this that keeps them safe and satisfied. And you know the saying about if the mountain won't come to Muhammad? Well, if you haven't a way to get the cat safely into the garden, you can bring the garden to the cat by growing seeds like millet or oats or various grasses which due to their particular vision, cats see as red, not green. You might skip the wheat grass because cats can't digest it. And although it may help clean out their digestive tract, it does make them upchuck. If they do, we sell this handy sign in the Peter catalog. And to impress your friends, never say hairball. Its proper name is Bezor. Cats are cheap dates. You can buy them fancy things like this wonderful army tank, and they really don't care much about them. I'm like that too. Bloomingdale's, Harrods. Give me a thrift shop any day. When I was little, my mother bought me a swanky Edwardian doll's house with tiny chairs and beds and even a kitchen in it. I hated it, and I swapped it with a girl down the street for an orange crate. Cats are the same way. They enjoy simple things like paper shopping bags, but please always cut the handles off. And they adore a cardboard box, no matter if they don't exactly fit into it or if it requires modification. Cheap plastic balls are invariably a hit. At Peter, everyone picks up fallen feathers, and Bubbles is so proud of her collection that she will lead you to it if you come into the policy department. Let me introduce you to two other Peter policy cats.
they came to us, Brandy had almost no hair, Bubbles jumped a city block at the slightest sound, and Marshall had lost part of a leg. He said it was in a motorcycle accident, but I think he was just being macho. We love them all dearly. Remember T.S. Eliot's fictional cat Deuteronomy? He survived endless misadventures and he outlived nine wives before he exhausted his nine lives. Most cats aren't as lucky and they need to be protected to live out their precious one life. Here are nine home hazards to look out for. Electrical cords, window blinds, recliner chairs and folder beds that can squash an unwary cat. Telling your cat not to jump on the stove is a bit like trying to talk to Justin Bieber about nuclear physics. So do cover hot burners and discourage walking on stovetops. Never leave conventional antifreeze out, which cats love to lick and which can kill them. Never use a pine-based cleaner because it's toxic. Be careful what plants you bring into the home. And again, cut the handles off those paper bags. Oh, and always, always, always check the dryer before turning it on. You don't want that thump, thump, thump sound to actually ever be thumper. Did I say always check? Cats will let you know they need your attention, which we must always give them, even if we're packing or working. Yes, no matter how busy we are, whatever we might have to do is not as important as being their companion. If you absolutely can't play right now, provide them with anything with a ball in it. Blow bubbles to fascinate them. Toss paper balls and silver foil down the hall. Get a wiggly battery-operated fish. Dangle anything and everything you can think of. And if you must leave, be sure to turn on the CAC TV. I know those two Formula One race teams and they deserve that SWAT. So where are we? You love and play with your cat. You keep the litter box the way you would wish to find it if you were stepping into it with your own bare feet. You race to the vet if there's any sign of a problem. Have the poison control hotline number on your fridge. Your cat is spayed or neutered and you never let them down to the end of the town without you. But what might make your brain explode losing your cat? One of the worst things that can ever happen, and I thought it would never happen to me, but it did. I did everything I recommend in the book, spoke to the mail carrier, enlisted the help of children in the neighborhood, crept out at night when it was quiet and cold and cold, peered down drains and in crevices, went to every animal shelter every single day to personally look at the incoming cats, and put up giant signs everywhere including at every intersection. The reward is what did it in the end. Someone read my sign and called to say that the cat under her porch just might be Moomin. She was. Now, I'm not advising you to consult a psychic, as I think many of them are not psychic at all, but I was desperate, so I did. From the other side of the country, she told me that Moomin had squeezed out of a window, crossed the quiet street at night, and when the rain came, as it had, she'd hidden under some bushes. In the morning, she was too frightened to cross back over the road, as it was now full of traffic. Moomin had walked east for a mile and holed up under that house. Eleven days had passed, and she was thin, nervous, and exhausted. The ancient Egyptians used to mourn the loss of a cat by shaving off their eyebrows, but that seems rather paltry when your heart is broken. Luckily, my Moomin was found. Show me those high fives.
so there we are. I hope you'll get 250 vital things for yourself and it does make a wonderful present. Inside, you'll find travel tips, nail cutting tips, because declawing means you're removing the bone and the muscle, not just the nail, a hideous assault. There are recipes for homemade cat food, tips on how to talk to your cat, how to read his body language, like that question mark tail, even what you can do to ensure that your cat will still be looked after if, God forbid, you can no longer keep that wonderful member of your family. There's lots more too, including a quiz that you might like to take to see if you're truly the cat's pajamas or only a work in progress. Although, since you're watching this, I rather fancy you'll do very well on the test. Thanks so much for watching.